Hey there, welcome to another Transformers toy review. Today we're taking a, taking a look sorry, at a figure from the Studio Series line, the uh, Movie 86 line that is, and this is Dinobot Slug, not Slag, uh, with Daniel Witwicky. So this one is kind of like a like a leader class figure. So he's on scale with uh, Grimlock, who I've got as well, which uh, we'll do a bit of a size comparison. I've also got Studio Series Hot Rod, so we can do a bit of a comparison there as well. So here he is in his packaging. On the front here, you get um, some artwork of uh, Slug Slag in his dino mode with uh, uh, Daniel here kind of riding him in his exosuit. In the uh, picture, you can actually see he's got like a, a see-through kind of uh, visor thing that kind of top that goes over and you can actually see Daniel in it. But if you actually look at the actual product itself, it's just like a white dome that goes over it. It's um, similar, to, I guess, to one that came with uh, Bumblebee, the, the um, Buzzworthy series. It's, um, yeah, they just put a silver thing in, so there's no head, moulded head or anything in there with a, a thing on it, which would have been a lot nicer. And you see him in here, in the packaging in robot mode. He's got the uh, red uh, head with it, with the uh, blue eyes. Uh, and then if you come around to the side here, Studio Series 86. Um, as usual, they come with like a, a backdrop so all the studio series do this. Do this. It's uh, like a display thing that you can do this. And down here it just says uh, Dinobot Slug excuses himself as he stomps over a crushed Quinton prosecutor. So yeah, that's that kind of scene where he uh, barges in, doesn't he? Uh, knocks down the door, and there's one just underneath the door, I think. And he's like, "Excuse me." Uh, Thirty-two steps of transformation. Uh, looks like he does come with a blaster, but not with a sword. Um, and it says big screen inspired scale detail backdrop uh, and then the rest in the other language and and here it says uh, uh, mockery of justice um, so you've got that there as well um, and that's pretty much it really um, what I'll do then is I'll get him out of the packaging and uh, we'll take a look see what he's like right here we are we've got him out of the packaging this is the kind of backdrop that you get with it so I've just opened it up as you know as much as you you can really. So uh, they are good, um, but it only really allows you to display one figure or a couple of figures on it. You couldn't get like another leader class figure or anything else on it. So it'd be alright if you say want to display kind of like hot rod or something down here. You could do that. But you, it's a job to get them all on the same thing. So it's a decent sort of display, but. Yeah, it's tough to get them all on display together. Um, as a bit of a size comparison, I'll just pop them down here a second and then we'll bring in some of the other figures. So he's a big old boy, I've had to sort of zoom out a little bit. So there he is with Hot Rod there. So you'd see, you know, he's nearly twice the size of Hot Rod. Um, this guy, there are peg holes on either side for him, but I can only kind of get him in on this side just because of the angle. Um, and then you've got Grimlock here. So you can see Grimlock, um, Slug here is a little bit taller, but like the proportions on Slug are slightly different, so the arms are a lot bigger. Um, a legs are chunkier on Grimlock, um, again smaller, but yeah, generally the proportions are kind of round about the same. This guy's got a lot bigger, chunkier kind of midsection to him. Um, yeah, so that's his size comparison. And these guys basically are more or less retools. Um, this one looks slightly bit bigger, but uh, not much in it. I'm going to pop this off to the other side and then we'll take a look at the figure himself and we'll go through the articulation right then so let's go through the articulation on this guy and everything else all the accessories so you get uh, this um, Daniel figure he kind of sits on his shoulder here uh, via this little 
peg here. Like I said, there is one on this side, but I can't get him at an angle where you can actually sit him on there unless you have him. Yeah, I can't, I can't really do that, but you can peg him on this side and he sits fine. Um, there is a little bit of paint on him. So you get yellow down here. Uh, this is like a white gloss. Uh, the hands are painted and the legs. And it's just all on ball pegs, really. Um, just move. No, no waist articulation. Legs just move forward and back and out to side. Nothing at the knee. Lots of kind of hollow pieces inside here as well. Uh, the arms are on. Yeah, it's just one ball peg. Um, but these bits here look like they're separate pieces. So you just, there's a little, they, they do kind of wiggle a little bit as you move them. So just be careful that these kind of rotate all the way around and a little bit of forward movement in and out there. Um, and that's really about it. Um, as a result of their legs not being bent, you can't actually get them to stand up. So you can only really ever have him kind of sat down in that pose either in robot or dyno mode. He also comes with this uh, blaster here. So I think this is similar to the, the G1 rifle that he had. It is painted, so it's kind of this kind of grayish kind of gloss um, color, which is done nicely. Oh, and his hands come off. So there is a good connection so tight, in fact, that it's taken his hand off. So that is on like a mushroom peg. So you can just, should be able to just slide that back on. Yeah, and I've just folded his, his hand back in there. So that is to do with transformation, I presume. Let's see if we can pull this out using the gun. Yeah, so you can do that. It's a little bit of a pain, isn't it? So let's see if we can do it like that. So that should be on there like that. So yeah. And the hands do rotate around. And you can see this one, this habit of, uh, I don't know if it's the gun that's a little bit too tight because of it. So I'll just need to pop this back on. Right. Um, yeah, so I did manage to sort out the fist in the end. If you if that does happen and it's a bit of a tight connection, it pulls it off. If you move it around to the side, and then just push it down. It will eventually click click in. So that's just something to be aware of. Right, so let's take a look at this guy and all of his articulation. Um, first of all, he's, you know, he's a he's a big bot and uh, he's quite got quite a good kind of presence about him. He does have like a, a bit of a kind of backpack thing going on with these kind of wing pieces, which, you know, if you've got the original toy, you've kind of been used to seeing that and this piece here, part of his tail. Uh, it doesn't bother me too much. It's kind of how I'd expect him, a, uh, expect a slag or slug to look. <laughs> Pardon the uh, phrase. Um, and then you've got his head here. Um, and this, it's hard to kind of get in and, and manoeuvre it. But um, it's red plastic, but then the actual face itself looks as if it's painted red with then this um, metallic blue in here for the eyes, which uh, shows up really well. But the head itself is quite difficult to move around because it's um, in this piece here. But, you know, you can kind of get them looking down a fair bit and then kind of up. You can move it from side to side and even a little bit. It does rotate all the way around, but it's just difficult to maneuver while it's in there and, you know, that's just part of the character design. That's hard to hard thing to get away with, get away from. Sorry, uh, so these bits have come up like that. I guess I, I don't know how they're meant to be, but um, you get these bits that move on the side here. Uh, this piece here again is painted the same colour as the gun, so it's this kind of um, almost glossy grey with the Decepticon Decepticon Autobot symbol on here, which is nice and big. There's a little, tiny bit of overspray like in the corners here or where they've kind of just gone over slightly. Um, I don't know if these bits would be hand painted or done by machines, exactly how they're done. 
and then you've got some black paint in here. There's lots of sculpted work as well throughout on the main figure and that carries through onto the arms. Uh, you get like a matte black paint on here and you get some more kind of peg holes where you can um, add weapons and things like that. The arms, so you get a ratchet joint that goes all the way around. The arm then comes up to there, um, which is really good the way that it does that. It kind of, it, you know, looks quite natural the way that it does it. And then you get a swivel here at the bicep and then almost like a double jointed elbow there that takes you up to there. Um, and yeah, and that's good the way that it moves actually, because you've got like, it doesn't leave a gap in the elbow or anything else like that. So it's nicely done. Um, we mentioned the head. The waist does articulate. So that should take you all the way around. It's quite stiff, so it's, it's friction rather than any kind of ratchet joints or anything else like that. There's no um, kind of bends in here or anything else like that. So it's just the waist articulation there. The fists do rotate around. Um, as you saw, these can pop off. So just be careful with them. If they do, you can kind of put them back on using the gun. I think that was just a, a kind of one-off. Uh, maybe I put it in too tight. Uh, the legs, again, um, lots of detail and paint. So this is kind of one colored plastic, um, which works well joined in with the, the red up here. And you get green and blue paint in here, which is almost like a, like a metallic finish to it. And the legs go out all the way to there and hold very well as well. Forward like that. So you can get a good kick on it and that's all ratcheted. And then back, well, I think if you move the tail out of the way, you can go all the way back. Um, and again, that's all ratcheted. Um, and there's kind of good movement within that. So you don't, um, what am I trying to say? There's a good, there's a little, you know, there isn't much distance between them. So you don't have to like um, go like a quarter of the way up. There's got lots of little ratchets in there. Again, ratchets in the knee there, which take you back to there, which is, it, I mean, it's okay. It's not great, but it's enough. This is all nice. Um, you know, it's all filled in. There isn't like loads of gaps and holes or anything else on here. All the feet fill in there quite nicely. And uh, the feet are painted gold. And you get a rocker that goes all the way out to there. And it does actually peg in as well. So if you want it just secure. And you've got more five millimeter peg holes underneath and to the side which can be used for weapons or you can use those weaponizer figures on there as well and this tail piece here does actually it's supposed to tuck in like that i think so that is it secure but you can have it loose if it's interrupting the movement with any of these bits out here and these bits do also move and they are painted as well you've got another peg there for the gun there as well yeah, so that is him in his robot mode. Uh, pretty good. Nice to have someone to go alongside Grimlock. And, you know, you can get this guy in some pretty dynamic poses. He's pretty neat. Um, it's a shame, really, this piece here kind of breaks the sculpt a little bit where it's kind of halfway through there. Um, that's the only kind of little nitpick. But he does look good, you know, with the Daniel figure, you know, it was a nice idea, but it's just not very well executed. Um, I'd rather they did like a sword with it and some blast effects, maybe. Uh, I know that's been done a, a ton of times, but I think I'd rather that than them put one of these guys in there. Um, it just seems a bit pointless. So that's that. And then I think I've already done done it with this guy, but you know you can see alongside there. And uh, next up, we'll take a look at the transformation. Let's take a look at transformation now. I'm gonna try and 
do this first time round, just I because I think it should be fairly straightforward, but we'll see. So I think the first thing we'll do is pop away those those hands into there. So they should just fold in. Oh, I see, you just have to put them on their side, I think. I'll turn them upside down and pop them in, okay. Okay, so they're in there like that. And I would just pop those forward, and move those out of the way like that. Um, and then these bits here, they're gonna have to come forward like that. And this tail section is gonna have to kind of come out and move out like that. And just kind of like peg in like so. Um, and then, and then it looks like this piece here is going to be where all the legs and everything is is in here. So you're going to have to kind of fold these bits out. Like so, oh, I see, like that. So there's this little section here that just comes out like that. And that will allow you then to kind of move this section out like so. Like that. And presumably that will then come back down again. I think I just need to, if I just lift this up a second out of the way, that should give us the clearance to okay, so oh I see so that's like a double jointed thing there it goes back oh I see so it looks like you actually have to kind of move switch this around like this and then and then bring these legs back like this So it's not quite how I thought it would be actually. So I'll just do it on this side. So you've rotated the waist around like that. And then you're gonna um, rotate this bit around here like so. So I thought they were gonna kind of like a more of a, a vintage transformation. These bits like peg in underneath here as well. There's a couple of little pegs there on either side. Like that, so that should these should peg into there like so. These into the side like that. And then this should come over here. These bits should peg over there. There should be a little peg for that as well. If you line that up. You can see there's in in between the two legs there's like a little there's two little peg holes there. So it should be just a case of lining those up. These should peg in on either side, is that right? Looks like they peg in either side like that. I haven't quite got this bit nailed. So I need to make sure these are, are lined up properly as well. That's like a tricky little bit of that. 
Come on. Just want to line that up. Peg these down. And these will fold out. These look fairly straightforward. Like that. Oh, I see. Ooh. So that's actually come off. <laughs> so that's not great, is it? Ah, uh, there is a little peg there for that. On the side. Right, let's try and line all this up. Right, let's try and clean this up. Right, so, um, yeah, in terms of pegging this bit in, what I did is actually uh, moved the leg out, pegged it into one side, and then pegged it back in here, and then lined up these two pieces here, it's easier. With regard to this piece here, um, I had to refer to instructions, because what you have to do, actually, is it's all to do with this piece here. So as you, if you open this up um, and then move this out here like that, um, you obviously bring in the mouth forward like that, which is really neat. It hides away the the head um, and also gives you the mouth here. But then what happens here is these piece is move in. Yeah, they actually move in, so let's uh, Yeah, they actually go in like that, so I don't know how much further they actually go in, whether or not they are on, uh, they are on like a hinge. Here, ah, uh, so that's it. Ah, uh, that's really clever. So as you, so you bring it out this hinge and then bring it back in. Like that. So then these bits should be nice and close to each other. So this should all peg in like that. Which then means this bit can come over here, like so. I've done it right. Yeah, that should come over here. And then these bits will then actually peg into the right bits. So on either the, either side, and that should then all peg together nicely. And then you just need to fold out your leg. And then you got him. <laughs> so it's actually a little bit more complicated than I thought. There is also a little bit which you have to do with the gun where you just peg this in at the back here. Um, but yeah, he's, he's a pretty good transformation. Well, the only little nitpick is, I don't know why they've done this, but the these um, horns here on the inside, that's all open. But the face is painted great. Uh, you know, it looks like it's just off the cartoon. Fantastic looking, uh, eyes are great, symbol on here, the mold's great, all the detailing, you get a um, mouth that goes up and down, uh, so it looks like they've, you can, oh it looks at, like they, you can add like a little blast effect in there, which is a, a neat little touch, I was thinking they'd lost the opportunity for that. Um, and then you've got various places where you can add blast effects and things like that. Um, this is all painted on here. Some nice paint on here, loads of molded detailing. The legs again forward, 
connect to side, forward here, swivel there, um, no kind of like tilt or anything on them unfortunately. And then the back legs, they're a little bit diddy, but you get rotation here, uh, bend goes back to there, swivel uh, bend in here as well. So yeah, it's, uh, I think that's, that's pretty decent. Uh, and you can obviously splay these out a little bit as well. Uh, and no movement on the tail. So yeah, he is, that does look good. And there he is alongside Hot Rod there. So that kind of scales quite well, I think. You can see him kind of pushing him into the shuttle there. I think that works well. And then uh, this little guy, I think, is supposed to sit on the top here somewhere. So, uh, yeah, it's to do with these little side pieces here. And it's supposed to go in on either side like that. So you can ride him like that if you want to. Obviously, you could do the same. Again, you put on maybe um, wheelie and do it that way as well. So, yeah, pretty good looking dyno mode. Uh, next up, I'll bring in Grimlock and we'll do a size comparison with him. Here we are. I've got uh, the two of them in their dyno modes. I think that scale works. Um, Grimlock's obviously a fair bit taller, but um, slag here is quite wide. Um, I have managed to get everything kind of plugged in properly now. You do have to wiggle it around to get this bit properly plugged in and these side pieces and just align everything. The other bit to mention is there are a couple of grooves here where this tail piece kind of sits over the, the kind of the top and a bit of that bit of that foot there so that sits in nicely and obviously these bits here are like fake feet <laughs> which you you know you would normally see in the kind of uh, original toy yeah a nice little piece that they got in here for a blast effect unfortunately I haven't got any blast effects with me but it's one of the peg ones so you can do kind of like the breathing fire one um, if you've got that um, so that's, that's a, a good one to have you know in terms of like a recommend yeah definitely recommend this guy he's uh he's very cool um you know the only you know only like nitpick it'd be like things like holiness in here uh they sort of like the holiness in the hand on this one by folding it in which they do you know you have the holiness in, in grimlock but just filling that bit out just something like that would look a load better um this piece around here is good uh, my preference would be to to have had it painted i understand why they didn't but um, that's just me um other than that he's a great figure there's tons of molded detail on him lots of paintwork and where it's applied it's done well you know they've their head sculpt on both dino and robot mode is great You've got articulation in the jaw, you can have blast effects. Really good. Articulation's great, displays well. Yeah, looks really good. And I think this guy, you can display him in either mode and he looks really good. Uh, Grimlock, I think, because of the, the way that he stands and the sort of top heaviness, I think I'd probably always look to display him in, in robot mode. But with this guy, I'm not so sure. Um, yeah, it depends what they look like on the shelf together, but uh, I may well have this guy in his dyno mode and this guy in his robot mode just to display them alongside each other. But um, for the for me anyway, um, old slug here is a, a recommend. Well worth getting through, getting hold of if you can. Um, really good uh, build on it. Uh, feels really nice. Um, I did have this kind of pop off when I was transferring forming it but again it's just on a little uh, thing there so you can easily pop it back off pop it back on sorry in the hand I think dropped off didn't it um, where I had the gun on a little bit tight but generally uh, good fun to transform um, transformation is a little bit different than what I expected but still good um, there's a little bit yeah there's holiness at the back here um, I you know I only just notice that and I just sort of 
feeling round uh, to pick up the figure, but um, you don't really notice it because it's around the back of the figure, but you do notice that a little bit there. So that's a little bit annoying. But apart from that, really good figure. Um, high rec highly recommend picking it up and adding it to your collection of Dinobots. That is it for me. That is it for now, guys. Sorry, a little bit tired. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed the review, if you've been watching, and uh, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye for now.